Good day, everyone. This is ASEAN News with me, Vanessa. President South Korea guarantee no gap in the United States alliance. South Korea's President Moon Jae-in on this month says the country will ensure there is no gap in the alliance with the United States in the process of building peace on the Korean Peninsula. Moon's remarks came as he congratulates Joe Biden for his victory in the United States presidential election. According to the presidential palace Blue House, South Korea will cooperate with the United States to promote shared values including democracy, peace and human rights, Moon tells his top aides. Moon also says his government will work to promote economic relations, including on building a carbon-neutral economy, which Biden has been promoting. Brazil starts building production of China's Sinovac against coronavirus disease. Governor João Doria says the Brazilian state of São Paulo begins building a facility to produce 100 million doses a year of China's Sinovac vaccine against COVID-19, which will be ready by September next year. São Paulo is also importing the vaccine before the facility is ready, and Doria says the first batch of 120,000 import Sinovac vaccines will arrive on November 20th, with the state's Bunantan Biomedical Center receiving a total of 6 million doses by year end. In we start building the first factory for the COVID-19 vaccine in Latin America here at the Butantan Institute. I have just visited the factory. It is a facility that had existed before in the Butantan Institute, but it has been totally remodeled, and that is where we will have the production of the vaccine here in Brazil. The vaccine production facility will cost $142 million, which donated by private companies. São Paulo Health Secretary Jean Gorinstein says the Butantan Institute will soon publish results from Clinic Phase 3 tests it conducts in Brazil to demonstrate the safety and efficacy of Sinovax vaccines. He adds previous studies are established at the safety of the vaccine known as Coronavac and shown it produces antibodies in almost 98% of the volunteers that received the shots. Doria says the vaccine will only be used once it has been approved by Brazil's health regulator, Anvisa. Telling informs Hungarian minister test positive for coronavirus. Thalin says a Hungarian diplomat infected with the coronavirus after being exposed to his foreign minister, whose tour to the region are suspended after he test positive for the virus, and had been in close proximity with Hungarian Foreign Minister Peter Siarto in the hours before he aborted his official visit after entry screening confirmed he was infected. This is a local transmission, but from a person who got infected from Hungary, which happened to spread to one case in Cambodia and one case in Thailand. Health authority says Siarto had hours earlier met top officials in Cambodia, where four people test positive for the coronavirus, among them a local lawmakers and Hungary's ambassador. Prime Minister Hun Sen and family members are among more than 1,000 people test and confirmed negative. Cambodia closed schools in Phnom Penh as precaution following the recent infections. Joe Biden supports female employees for roundtable discussion. File footage of the president shows that he supports women to involve in roundtable discussion. He said it when he met with Marie Watanabe, game company worker, in Tokyo seven years ago. You know, some advocates argue that the reason to have women more involved in leadership positions is they're gentler and kinder. I've never found that to be the case. <laughs> they're as tough, they're as strong, they're as everything as a man is, and vice versa. But the important thing that's different is just like men, they bring a different perspective. I personally will not rest till my four granddaughters have every single solitary opportunity my grandson has. And I mean every. I don't mean some, I mean every. There's not a single thing that a man can do that a woman cannot do. Watanabe, a human resources employee at the Dina company, one of the female staff who took part in Biden's 2013 roundtable discussion, 
at the firm on promoting women's role in Japan's male-dominated society. Biden on visit to Japan as the United States Vice President at that time to meet with then Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Following his victory at the 2020 U.S. election, Biden is set to take office at the White House on January 20. His running mate, United States Senator Kamala Harris, will be the first woman, the first black American and the first American of Asian descent to serve as the vice president. Watanabe vividly remembers Biden advocating for female empowerment within the workforce, and she believes Harris' appointment will encourage and inspire many Japanese women who need to juggle their careers and families. <laughs> I think it's encouraging for Japanese politics, working women, and women who need to balance their work and family. I think Kamala Harris will definitely encourage a lot of people and be an inspiration. Japan lags well behind other major industrialized nations when it comes to gender equality. According to the World Economic Forum's Global Gender Gap Report 2020, Japan ranks 121st out of 153 countries in terms of gender parity, a decline of 11 places compared to its ranking a year before. Thousands of supporters welcome Islamist leader Rizik Shihab in Jakarta after arrives in Indonesia. Thousands of supporters continues to warm welcome for firebrand, cleric, and Islamist leader Rizik Shihab in his Jakarta neighborhood. Rizik waves to supporters as the vehicle moves through the streets with people crowding close to capture the moment on their mobile phones after he arrives in Indonesia from Saudi Arabia. We really missed him. He is the person who loves this country the most. So he is risking everything for the religion and the nation. So it's not wrong for us to make him the highest priest of Muslims in Indonesia. Tidak salah kita menjadikan beliau itu selaku imam besar umat Islam. Indonesia kan Islam terbesar. I've been waiting for so long, and Indonesia is the largest Islamic country. Hopefully there will be unity within the Muslim community with the presence of this great imam. Islam dengan adanya sosok imam habis ibe ini. Rizik, who was jailed in 2008 on charges of inciting violence and who is head of the Heartline Islamic Defenders Front, became a figurehead for conservative Islam and political influential movement that helped bring down Jakarta's former Christian governor Ahok, who in 2017 was jailed for insulting Islam. That year, police filed a case against Rizik over insulting Indonesian secular state ideology, Pancasila, and breaching pornography laws after a purported steam exchange with a supporter that included naked images of a woman was circulated online. The cleric left Indonesia in 2017 and police dropped both cases a year later, but he had remained in self-exile in Saudi Arabia. South Koreans hopes for peace in the demilitarized zone in Biden's government. South Koreans to see signs of peace in the divided peninsula following Joe Biden's project victory in the United States presidential election. Biden made two visits to the military zone, once in 2013 as a vice president and another in 2011 as a senator to meet U.S. troops stationed in the country as a legacy to the technical unfinished 1950-1953 Korean War. A South Korean tourist at the demilitarized zone says his expectations are much greater for Biden when it comes to policies towards the North Korea. I think Vice President-elect Biden has visited Panmunjom twice because he is interested in the inter-Korean relations and knows that inter-Korean relations are important. I also think Biden will become a president who is more interested in inter-Korean relations. That's why my expectations are much greater for Biden administration than the Trump one. Meanwhile, Jang Seong Chung, who sells South Korean national flags at the souvenir store near the border, says outgoing United States President Donald Trump had strained the relation with the North. I personally think that he, Biden, will be able to build a new relationship with North Korea and play a role that will help both North and South Korea to have peaceful exchanges holding each other's hands. He will be better than Trump. Yeah. 
South Korean President Moon Jae-in says his country will ensure there is no gap in the alliance with the United States and the process of building peace on the Korean Peninsula as he congratulated Biden's win. Asian leaders participating in virtual summit via video conference on COVID-19 in South China Sea tensions. Southeast Asian leaders kick off a multilateral summit expect to address tensions in the South China Sea and tackle plans for a post-pandemic economic recovery in the region where United States and China rivalry has been rising. Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan Phuc says in his opening remarks at the 37th ASEAN Summit in Hanoi that the association of the Southeast Asian nations has so far not been drawn into those rivalries and challenges to the international multilateral system. Chúng ta đang trải qua những thời khắc vô cùng khó khăn. We are going through an extremely difficult time as COVID-19 threatens the life and livelihoods of our people, economies and societies are in disarray, further worsened by several natural disasters from droughts, flooding and continuous storms. ASEAN nations also expressed our consistent principle of and strong commitment to build the East Sea, South China Sea, a critical lifeline of transportation lanes for the region and the world into a peaceful, stable and safe ocean way where differences and disputes are resolved by peaceful measures and the law is respected. Focus on the summit's agenda will be tensions in the South China Sea, where Chinese ships are embroiled in periodic standoff with vessels from Vietnam, Malaysia and Indonesia, as Beijing seeks to assert its territorial claims in the disputed waterway. China claims about 80% of the sea, including large swathes of Vietnam's exclusive economic zone or EZ, as well as the Paracel Island and Sprati Island. It also overlaps the exclusive economic zone of ASEAN members, Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia and the Philippines. ASEAN leaders are also expected to sign the china back Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership in what could become the world's biggest trade agreement. Residents hope the tourism in Bali will return to normal after the COVID-19 vaccine progress. Residents on Indonesia's popular resort island of Bali are holding their breaths with hope as the multiple COVID-19 experimental vaccines make varied progress globally. In my opinion, I hope the vaccine findings are correct. We hope that tourism in Bali will quickly return to normal, as before, and our economy will continue as before, before the pandemic. The world cheer when Pfizer announced its drug, jointly developed with BioNTech, was more than 90% based on initial trial results. Yet health experts cautioned that the vaccine should be approved was no silver bullet, not least because the genetic material it's made from, but needs to be stored at the temperatures of minus 70 degrees Celsius. For an economy heavily reliant on tourism like Bali Islander, and tourism operators warmly welcomed the news of Pfizer progress with confidence. Ya, uh, tentunya pasti sudah dengan berbagai tahapan mereka melakukan. Yes, of course. The Pfizer vaccine has gone through various stages of tests and trials. So I'm sure that with this announcement, I'm very confident that the Pfizer product can be trusted. Maka saya yakin Pfizer memang bisa dipercaya. For South African tourist Jane Nielsen, she remains skeptical. I think any vaccine is questionable, especially if it's by a, a pharmaceutical company, because most people know pharmaceutical companies are in it for the money. So ideally, I would not respond very positive, because I know there are natural ways that's been proven to get rid of this COVID. I had COVID in January before it became even big. I was very sick for three weeks. Indonesia's state-owned pharmaceutical company Biopharma says that its late-stage clinical trials of China's Sinovac coronavirus vaccine are going smoothly after Brazil suspended trials due to the severe adverse effect. According to the country's COVID-19 task force, Indonesia reported 3,770 new coronavirus infections, taking its total number of cases to 448,118. At least one person dead in heavy rain and high winds caused by Typhoon Vamco in Philippines Island. Typhoon Vamco lashes at the province in the Philippines overnight, killing at least one person and paralyzing parts of the capital Manila. Video obtained by Reuters show high winds and torrential rain slamming against trees in municipality of Malino, 320 kilometers of South Manila.
Pam the 21st cyclone to hit the Philippines this year. Better nation still reeling from Goni, the world's most powerful typhoon this year that killed 25 people and destroyed thousands of homes early in November. Vamco with sustained winds of the 130 km per hour and gusts of up to 215 km per hour as it moves across Luzon, home to half of the Philippines' 108 million people, it is forecast to head towards Vietnam next week. The former Malaysian aircraft pilot serves food to the customers. Malaysian aircraft pilot Azrin Muhammad Zamawi dons his white captain's uniform in the small noodle style to serve food in the capital Kuala Lumpur. I need some income because I was retrenched by my previous company and uh, I plan with my wife what should I do? I need to do something. So when I ask my wife and my mother-in-law and my father also, they told me, why don't we go for food business? Azrin44 is one of thousands of airline workers who suddenly found themselves without jobs after countries grounded flights and imposed widespread travel restrictions due to the coronavirus pandemic. The business caught the attention of the Malaysian public after Azrin was photographed wearing his captain's uniform under a red apron, an image that quickly went viral on social media. Still, customers say the business venture is more than just a gimmick. The main thing is the food must be good. The main thing is the food must be good. It is not enough for the business to go viral. The food has to be good. I've eaten here twice, the first time I brought my wife and now I bring my friends. For the price, it is suitable and the food tastes good. Azrin says he hopes his experience can inspire others affected by the pandemic to seek out new sources of income. Embrace the challenge and uh, never give up and always look forward. Do not look backward, always go forward. It's like flying the aircraft, we always move forward. Same goes to any other uh, occupation. When you go for your first job, you start from zero. And then we need to learn until where you are now. The father of four decided to start a food business a few weeks ago, selling Malaysian dishes such as curry noodles, laksa, and a mixed fruit dish called rojak at a small food stall that he has named Captain Corner or Captain's Corner. Well, that's all the news for today. See you.